And joining us now are Christine Hallquist, her son Derek, who is the director of the film, and Aaron Wolf, who produced the film. Aaron, of course, well known as a producer of documentaries, King Corn, and also much of our audience knows you from your run for Congress four years ago. Right. So welcome to you all, we appreciate it. So, Christine, take us back. How many years ago was it when you were in the middle of shooting this documentary on climate change, when you shared this stunning admission and came out to Derek, who just happened to be filming the documentary? I would say it was probably around 2000, it was probably three years before the documentary came out, 2013. You shared your secret with your daughters first, and then Derek, and it's one of the scenes in the, in the film. You went for a long drive and, and you told him about it. Mm -hmm. I feared telling Derek the most because we, we were close and, and of course he had this image of his really male father doing all these really male things. And we were, we've always had a close relationship. So I was really afraid. And Derek, this came as a complete shock. Yeah, I really didn't um, deal with it for, I probably didn't think about it beyond telling my wife about it uh, for at least six months sort of brushed it off when everything went back to normal again. Uh, and then as time progressed and the movie became more serious for a lot more people, I started dealing with, well, how do I tell them? And will this ruin the movie? You know, this we can't lie, we're making a documentary. Uh, this has to be part of the story. And you were several years into the, into the making of the film. Did you stop and say, whoa, do we continue on with this or do well, we I was give it up? Probably a little obsessed in a bad way at that point because the more I heard, like the more I would watch, you know, uh, environmental films about electric cars and electric transportation is our way to deal with climate change. It seemed like the world was going the wrong direction to me with access to my father. You know, I had this insider telling me what's really going on, and then I'd listen to the news, watch you know, what's going on and, and talking to my friends, and everybody thought that this was the way out when I knew it, was, you know, it wasn't that easy. So I was super worried that now at this point I'm obsessed, most of my life I've wanted to tell this story, and to me it felt like that story was gonna get derailed and I wouldn't be able to tell it anymore. Aaron, did you any other producers debate whether to incorporate Christine into the story or, or what, what to do, whether to continue on with the original Not film? at all, this was like documentary gold. <laughs> you know? I mean, it, it was an intimate, personal story and when Christine was, was willing to tell it, uh, when she hadn't even told people at work, and I think maybe even more importantly, Derek was willing to not just be you know, a, a fellow filmmaker but a character um, that's a level of intimacy that in, in documentary you hope for all the time. And what, um, what made me so excited about this project as it developed, it was another way of dealing with real issues, showing real issues, but in the context of real people. For me, I was dealing with it on a personal level, and it was a struggle, Dad's right. It did sort of rock my world, even though I pretended I didn't want to hurt her feelings. Um, which now I think is silly because it, it's been how many years? Like three years now, and it's it's it, this is normal. But before, when I see Dave now in the movie, it's strange. Like when we watched it um, in Lake Placid together, I hadn't seen the movie in almost a year, and I'm so comfortable with Christine. When Dave came up on the screen and walked up to the camera, I was like, "Who's that?" It was very strange. It was, it was almost like when I met Christine for the first time. I had that same feeling of, you know, abnormal, something's not right. Christine, uh, how old were you when you knew something was different, when you I, were different? I knew as far back as I can remember. And, you know, it's six or seven years old. I, I knew it was just part of me. And uh, I learned, you know, I learned that I had to hide it. And I didn't pretty good job of doing, of hiding it. Yeah. So through your teenage years? Through teenage years, well literally back in that time they put people in a mental institution for gender dysphoria. So my, my mom, I remember my mom telling me, you know, at 11 years old, she, I, I finally got her to dress me up as a little red riding hood and I loved it so much. And she basically said, you can't tell people this. 
Yeah, and I, I, I took the message to heart. And, and she knew your mom? She didn't really know at the time. In fact, I didn't know. You know, I didn't know until I was like 44 what transgender was. There was not even a definition for it back then. It was just different, and you had to keep it a secret. And so as time went on into adulthood, you kept the secret. Well, yeah, and I'll tell you, that one of the things that is very common, I, I find, is what I did. We called it the purge. You know, you have your, and even all throughout high school, I had my, my collection of clothing and all that, and then you'd say, I'm going to purge my clothes, I'm going to throw them all away, because I, I'm going to stop doing, I'm going to stop, you know, pretending to be female. I'm a, I'm a man. Well, then you'd buy some clothes and it'd build up again. Finally, after like seven times, like, this is too expensive to purge. I'm not doing this anymore. And then it was later after that I found out about what transgender was. And so you kept, kept them hidden. Kept Were them you, hidden, right. Yeah. Did you live in fear, though, that, that oh, your, yes, very much your, fear. your secret would yeah. be discovered? Oh, yes. Yeah. Incredible fear. You look back now, you say it, was, it, it appears like it was highly irrational fear because now that I'm sitting here, but, but it was, yeah, a lot of fear. Was your intention originally, though, to keep the secret? To the, yeah, we were going to keep the, grave? the secret to the grave. Yep. And, and what changed your mind? When I started reaching my late 40s, it was really my children that changed my mind because very close relationship, yet they didn't know the truth about me. I couldn't live with, with the, the idea of going to my grave without my, telling my children the truth. So you told your wife, Pat, first, and that took a few years before yep. then yep. you told That's right. yep. the kids, and then you yep. told yep. your daughters first, and then... And yep. then we see the family processing it in the film. Uh, that's a great part of the film. Is there a lot we didn't see? Was, was this incredibly difficult for the family? Yeah, there's, there's ups and downs. Um, you know, we, our first version of this movie was almost three hours long, and it had a lot of the ups and downs. And unfortunately, you know, we had to get to the heart of like, what is denial, as Aaron was saying earlier, that's when we found if we keep that as a thread and start deleting scenes the rest will follow and it should come into place so um, yeah I mean there's there was really dark times our sibling my siblings my two sisters and I leaned on each other a lot we're actually a lot closer now because of it um, because we went through this process um, we did come out on the other side you know feeling a lot more comfortable like I said with Christine now that I think of Dave as gone, basically. I, don't, I can't really imagine, uh, I imagine dad as Christine, so it's, it's interesting. I would have never expected to be at this point. And now, since the documentary uh, was made and came out, it's been a year and a half, almost two years now, how is the family, how, how is the relationship among the family members? I will speak for Pat, my, my spouse, and she, you know, she misses Dave. She married Dave. And Dave was, you know, to know that she was fell in love with this person who, you know, it's, 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 hard, it's hard to describe how it is because there are certainly elements and core parts of Dave that are still here, but there's parts of Dave that were just made up, you know, just to carry that image. You know, I, I say, you know, I sit here today with all the recognition nationally and, and the fact, I don't think I would have ever been a CEO of a utility if I, if I hadn't faked it as a man. You know, that's a very male-dominated culture. So, so, so uh, you know, that's kind of the long-winded answer. I think Pat will always struggle with the fact that she lost Dave. But as far as you can speak to the kids, and, I mean, I'm... I yeah, I mean, like we, we've... I think we've, we've moved beyond that and we're now at a place where we deal with normal family issues, you know, f you know, just from being a family, you know, different opinions about things and struggling with people being across the country. My youngest sister lives in California. I know she's struggling being that far away. So, um, but it's off and on, you know, I think it's mom that we mostly worry about. And she's still part of your life. And she's still part of we're, we're, We call ourselves five-star roommates. But we had separated for eight, eight months, but it got to the point where we were having dinner with each other. You know, we still love each other, but, but it's not a marriage, you know, it's not. And that's, that's I think, what the real issue is. So we were, spent, we, had two, we were keeping two separate places, and after about eight months, it's like, why are we keeping two separate places? It's just costing us money. We're having dinner with each other three or four times a week, so.
You physically transitioned on the job in December of 2015. How has it been in the in the two plus years since? Well, I I would say, I all I would say all the employees are where Derek is. You know, they only know Christine now. It's like that. It would be really strange for them to see Dave, and they'd probably be real uncomfortable. But, but, the first month was like walking on eggshells. You know, I, I I I like to joke that I say. You know, God, why couldn't I be the CEO of an artist colony? Why did it have to be a utility, the most macho business around? You know, I got to hand it to all of the employees. You know, the fact that they worked through that, and and uh, and it was really in the early of January I could tell things changed because people started joking with me again. And you know, there was there was this. I knew I knew as soon as this happened, I was walking with one of the the line workers early January down the stairs. And he says to me, he says, wow, you walk pretty good in those heels. I said, I've got years of experience. <laughs> we laughed together. I said, ah, things are, things are returning to normal.